what's the real point of this story what's true in this Harry Kane by back close story so guys hey guys welcome back to the channel Fabrizio Romano here as always to keep you posted on the transfer market and today guys we touch on Harry Kane, Joao Felix and discussion about closes but also what the clubs decided to do let's jump into it together <music> at the fans forum of Tottenham yesterday for Tottenham chairman Daniel Levy was also the opportunity to mention on many things of course they're very happy with Ange Postecoglou as new coach with the new mentality at the club so a very positive moment for Tottenham waiting for the North London derby with Arsenal but Daniel Levy also replied to one question and one of the news in the last 24 hours is about Harry Kane because he confirmed about uh, the buy uh, close the buyback close for Harry Kane in the contract in the agreement with Bayern but what's the real point of this story? What's true in this Harry Kane by back close story? So guys, checking with different sources, someone is denying this information, someone is confirming, but mentioning some particular details of this story, which make it a bit different than a by back uh, close, and uh, explaining what's the position of some people close to the negotiation, uh, they mention not a traditional buyback clause, so it's not kind of clause that is going to allow Tottenham to sign Harry Kane whenever they want, next summer or in the next years. No, this is just kind of clause uh, agreed between Tottenham and Bayern, denied by some sources, but confirmed by different sources, because this is private agreement and not an official clause, but this clause uh, could be to call Tottenham once Bayern decide if they will decide in the future to sell Harry Kane. So in case they will have some proposal for Harry Kane or some bid specifically from Premier League for Harry Kane, Tottenham will receive a call, a direct message, a formal message from Bayern to be informed on the situation. So Tottenham will have the possibility to match proposals, but nothing changes on the player side because it's always Harry Kane who decides what he wants to do with his future, not Tottenham or not any other club. So there is this kind of gentleman agreement between Bayer and Tottenham to give the opportunity to Tottenham to match bids in the future, always repeating, only in case Bayern decide in the future to sell Harry Kane, but then at the end the final choice is always down to Harry Kane. So okay, there is this possibility, but it's not something that is going to guarantee Tottenham to bring uh, Harry Kane back to the club. It's always up to the player. And then, guys, I wanted to mention something on Joe Felix. He's doing great with Barcelona. First two games he started in La Liga and in Champions League. Man of the match in both games, scoring goals, providing assists. He's doing great. Remember, it's a loan deal from Atletico Madrid and he extended his contract at Atletico Madrid before joining Barca on loan. There is no buy close included in the deal. So, formally, uh, Joe Felix will return to Atletico Madrid at the end of the season. But we know that it's over between uh, Joao and Atletico, that Barcelona are very happy with him, of course. Let's give it some time before we know the future of Joe Felix at Barcelona. But they wanted to clarify something about Chelsea because many Chelsea fans keep asking why Chelsea decided to let Joe Felix go. First of all, the feeling at Chelsea is that in May, in June, in July, and also in the first two, three weeks of August, for Atletico Madrid was impossible to accept a loan deal for Joe Felix at Chelsea. So from Chelsea, they wanted uh, a permanent transfer, not another loan after they already had the chance to sign Joe Felix on loan in January. So it was permanent transfer or nothing, and Atletico uh, knew that Chelsea decided against spending something like 70, 80 million euros on Joe Felix. So that was a no on the financial point of view for Joe Felix, but also technical point of view because Mauricio Pochettino, the new coach, was not convinced about this solution. So he wanted to go for different players. He believed that Nkunku is perfect for Chelsea in that kind of creative position. And so they decided uh, against uh, the negotiation for Joe Felix. So that was never the case. Once Pochettino joined Chelsea, the message was very clear. Joe Felix was no longer a target. They decided together, so it's not just Pochettino, it's together with the club, but Chelsea decided to go on a different way and not to spend maybe 70, 80, this is my idea, but they never negotiated. So that kind of fee, uh, million euros, of course, for Joe Felix. And now Barca, very happy with the loan deal they got on that line day. And so guys, let me know your thoughts on these two stories. Harry Kane and the close. Do you think it's going to be future for him at Tottenham or not? And also, Joao Felix, I wait for you in the comments. Like this video, turn on the notification bell, subscribe to the channel. See you soon with Fabrizio.